name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning to you all. And a very warm welcome to you all to our celebration of Mass today. We have the lovely story this morning, which most of us will remember, the cleansing of the temple. So to prepare ourselves to be cleansed by the presence of God among us, let us call to mind that we are sinners. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. I'm sorry about that. I had sixes and sevens this morning. We didn't need the glory. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us the remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not utter the name of the Lord your God to misuse it. For the, Lord your, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God has given to you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his servant, man or woman, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The precepts of the Lord are right, they gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, it gives light to the eyes. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abide on forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and sweeter are they than honey than honey from the comb. You, Lord, have the message of eternal love. Second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. While the Jews demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here we are, preaching a crucified Christ. To the Jews an obstacle that they cannot get over. To the pagans madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ who is the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The 
the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cords, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked the tables over and said to the pigeon sellers, take all this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, what sign can you show us to justify what you have done? Jesus answered, destroy this sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all and did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any man. He could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Just want to reflect with you now for a few moments this morning on the Word of God to us. First of all, it's great that Pope Francis has been able to go to Iraq. It was lovely to be there with him yesterday. This is, his mass was streamed. Um, he celebrated in the Chaldean Rite, which is a little bit different from what we celebrate. Um, but he celebrated mass, and uh, it was just a lovely experience. And those of you who are watching the mass uh, on stream, uh, first of all, you're all very welcome, but I want to assure you that um, if you try to take part as best you can, nothing suffices for being together. Uh, that's a great um, call of Pope Francis this time. It's the being together, meeting the community um, that really changes everything for us. Um, but it was lovely to be there with him and Take part as best you can by answering the responses, obviously listening to the readings and, and doing your best to, uh, to say uh, your prayers and enter into um, the, 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 the offering that Christ has made for us, his life. The gospel that we have listened to this morning, that the cleansing of the temple is mentioned in all the gospels. And I love the freedom that the evangelists had because most of them placed this before his passion, um, before Holy Week. But St. John changes it. And he has no problem at all in putting the cleansing of the temple in at the beginning almost of his gospel. And I believe that um, St. John put that in there uh, as a reminder that God is not confined to buildings, 
Buildings are only sacred insofar as people use them. It's the people using them to come together to worship God and to be focused on Him. But God is not confined to the building. God's work goes on all over the place. And we should always be ready to spot the work of God wherever it is, wherever there is love and joy and peace and forgiveness and patience. And um, that whole business of Francis reaching out to the Muslim community in Iraq, that is so important. We've been fighting each other for so long. It's almost as if it has become a way of life with us. I think we have probably focused on the Lord cleansing the temple with his whip and we've taken the violence out of that and made it our own. But the cleansing of the temple is very much about um, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. What's important is the temple of his body and you are that temple. That's why the coming together of God's people is so important. We can do nothing on our own. We are meant to be together, to support one another, to love one another, and to reach out to those around us, um, especially the stranger, the orphan, the widow, the lonely, the broken, and the hurt, and the sick, of course. So St. John's places that uh, the story that we had this morning right at the beginning of his gospel. And he's going to lead them into the wedding in Cana and, and, and the, the, the relationship he had with Nicodemus. Um, he's going to lead all that after this part of his gospel. So we, as we gather together this morning, we ask God to help us to cleanse our hearts to cleanse our temple, and that's us, not the, not the building, but to cleanse our hearts. You saw at the end of the gospel this morning, uh, Jesus didn't need to be told about any person. He, he knew what each person had in them. In other words, he knows us better than we know ourselves. So we don't have any fear in coming into his presence and asking for his help. Let us take a moment to pray. Lord Jesus, we are journeying with you through Lent. And we're coming now to the third week of Lent. And it's a good time to take stock, to look at where we're at and what's going on in our hearts. There's all kinds of things going on for each one of us. We pray, Lord, that you will cleanse us, that you will renew us, and that you will raise us up as your very own body. Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now as the good people of God, we bring our needs and the concerns of our loved ones to the presence of God. For all of us, as we continue our journey through Lent, May the Lord be with us, walk with us, and go before us. 
Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Pope Francis as he encourages the believers in Iraq this weekend. We ask God to bless them and to give them his protection. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for Christians everywhere who suffer for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for healing for the sick and for all people affected, especially with COVID. We ask God to be with them in all their needs. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the gifts of strength and gentleness for our health care workers and for all who minister to the sick. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the relief of everyone who is suffering with mental health issues. We pray that God will be with them and guide those who are trying to help them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all our children who are returning to school tomorrow. We pray for the teachers, for the parents, for all those who take care of them. We pray for God's protection in each of their schools. Lord, in your mercy, take a, a, a moment this morning to pray for our own particular needs. And we ask our blessed lady now to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, we bring you all these needs and we ask you to hear to the needs that we have in our hearts, for which we have no words to express. We ask you to hear them and grant them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, which earth has given and you and hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, be pleased with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks and praise that it should humble our, our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in all your kindness. And so we glorify you, Lord, with countless hosts of angels, 
as with one voice together we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a little wave of peace. For anyone who drinks it, says the Lord, the water I shall give will become in them a spring welling up to eternal life. Jesus, I believe that you are really and truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I invite you to come into my heart even though I cannot receive you just now. Heal me in all the ways I need your healing. Give me your spirit and cleanse my heart so that I may be full of love, joy, peace, kindness.
um, the symbols that are on it of, of the flowers. But do your best and take part in that novena. This is what the bishop says. St. Joseph looked after and guarded the holy family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, quietly looking over them and protecting them. I have absolutely no doubt that he would look after and protect each one of us and our families throughout the world. All we have to do is to ask his intercession. That is exactly what I am suggesting each one of us do in this run-up to this feast of St. Joseph. Ask him to pray on our behalf and hold us in his loving arms so that we can face the future with greater confidence and trust. So take that with you and um, say that little prayer to St. Joseph <coughs> leading up to the 19th of March. Now, um, this is just the usual. Details of our Lenten worship are available on the website and on our Facebook page in the, and in the weekly bulletin. The diocese has now published its guidance on Easter worship, so we will be able to let you know soon what services will be celebrated at Easter and how to book. Finally, as usual, please follow the one-way system for communion and wait to be invited by the welcomers. It is really important that you leave the church immediately after communion and go straight home. No congregating outside the church, please. Thank you all for being here this morning and I hope you all have a very pleasant week and a safe week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Speak to God.